Hello. This video is going to talk us through a projectile motion type problem. Um, so let's just jump right in. The idea is that you find yourself trapped in the world of the Angry Birds, and in order to escape, you want to build a rocket, but you need to know what is the gravitational acceleration that you'll have to overcome in order to actually leave their bizarre little planet. Um, so let's suppose then you enlist the help of Chuck in order to help find out what that gravitational acceleration is. And you're going to use projectile motion to do it. So ang in the Angry Birds, right, they're always firing themselves from slingshots. So we'll get Chuck to go ahead and do that. He'll launch himself and he'll travel in some nice projectile motion. And we'll say that we initially have a velocity of 50 meters per second. And we're traveling at some angle 45 degrees. So then, what can we do with that? Well, we know, after we do this, that we end up 100 meters away. So how are we going to turn this into talking about the gravitational acceleration? Well, let's see. Since we've got projectile motion, the first thing we should do is take a look at each direction separately. So we'll think about the x direction, we'll think about the y direction, and we'll think about a few different quantities in each of those. So we'll think about a displacement, we'll think about a velocity, and we'll think about an acceleration in each of those directions. So in the x, well, that's easy. We know we've gone 100 meters. I'll put that there. In the y direction, on the other hand, well, there is this height of the slingshot by which we've fallen. But the slingshot's pretty small, so let's leave it out and just call it zero meters to make life easy. In terms of velocity, well, we have to go back and decompose this velocity. So this vector is actually the sum of two vectors, which go like that. And that's a nice right angle there. And if you think about some trigonometry and you use Sokotoa, well, I'm looking here at the opposite side, and that's the hypotenuse. So the sine of this angle is equal to opposite on hypotenuse, which means opposite is just hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. So 50 sine theta is my y component of the velocity. And by the same token, 50 cosine theta is my x component, and both of those have units of meters per second. Now, in the x direction, what's the acceleration? Well, let's think about this carefully. Chuck is a very nice aerodynamic bird, so there's going to be very little air resistance. So the acceleration should probably be zero. On the other hand, in the y, well, that's exactly the acceleration that we need to find. That's that gravitational um, acceleration. So we'll just put g, um, just reminding ourselves though, that this is g in the Angry Birds world, not g um, for the Earth. So that's what we're looking for. So how are we going to actually do this? Well, it's clear that the acceleration is influencing our y motion. So let's start by thinking about kinematics in the y direction. So we'll write down that delta y is equal to v0t plus one half um, this g t squared. So our gravitational acceleration is the acceleration that we feel. v0 in the y direction, I should put a subscript y on that, is this 50 sine theta. And delta y is zero. So let's plug some of these things in. That's zero. That's 50 sine theta times a time which we don't know plus this g a b on 2 times this time squared which again we don't know so we've got a quadratic equation but it's all equal to 0 there's no constant offset so this is actually easily factored to t 50 sine theta plus g a b on 2 
and there's a t still there. So this has two solutions, either the first thing's zero, so t equals zero, that's unexciting because then we haven't gone anywhere and haven't learned anything, or this part is zero, which means that if we solve that, say, for GAB, so we demand that this thing be equal to zero and solve for GAB, then GAB has to equal 100 sine theta on t. So that's great, except we don't know what the time was. We measured how far Chuck ended up from us, but we have no idea how long it took him to get there. So let's now do the same sort of equation, but in the x direction. So the displacement in the x direction is delta x this time, so we'll correct that in a moment. And there'll be some initial velocity in the x, but there's no acceleration. So we don't need this second term at all, which is nice. So changing the y's to x's, we're just doing delta x is v0 x times t. So delta x is 100 um, meters. And that's supposed to equal this v0 x, which is our 50 cos theta meters per second if we're keeping track of units, um, times the time, which means the time is 50 cos theta meters, uh, sorry, the other way around. The time is going to be 100 divided by that. 100 meters divided by 50 cos theta. Um, and that's meters per second. So we see that the units work because that's going to give us seconds because the meters will cancel, so that one and meter cancels against that one. So we're going to get seconds as we flip that up to the top. So that's good. Time is in seconds. And this one over here, by the way, had units of meters per second. And now we know that time is, the, is indeed in seconds. That'll be meters per second squared, which is the right units for acceleration. So we're doing good so far. So let's substitute in. So putting in 100 on 50 cos theta just turns this into, well, we'll have a 100, but divided by 100, so that goes away. So we'll have the sine theta, and we'll have a cosine theta. And a 50 that comes up. Sorry about that, just making it a bit neater. So because this all in the denominator here ends up in the denominator yet again, that comes to the top. So you've got 50 sine theta, cosine theta, the hundreds cancelled, and the units are left as meters per second squared. So that's almost the answer. We now need to think about the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. Well, the angle is 45 degrees, and in the question that just down there, we've told you that the cosine of 45 and the sine of 45 are both the same, and they're equal to 1 on square root of 2. So we've just got, actually, 50 divided by square root of 2 times square root of 2 meters per second squared, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, so 50 divided by 2, 25 meters per second squared. So now we've found the gravitational acceleration uh, with Chuck's help. And now we know exactly the sort of rocket um, thrust that we'll need in order to, say, break orbit of the strange Angry Birds um, planet. Okay, I hope that was helpful and that projectile motion has become a bit clear. The key here was simply that we had to treat each direction of motion separately, and they were linked by one common thing, which was this time that appeared on uh, sort of both uh, sets of equations. And it's clearly the same time because the time it takes me to go up and down is the same time that I had to actually move to the right. So that motion in the two separate directions is connected by time. And that's essentially all there is to projectile motion, treat the directions, connect them by time. Hopefully that was helpful and we'll look at additional questions um, in other videos.